I'm Bobby, and today we'll start from scratch and build this. Have you ever wondered how the hell you could make 3D graphics on the web? 3JS is a powerful library that transforms code into awesome visual experiences. Whether you're a seasoned coder or simply curious, we'll start creating our own 3D scenes today. Since 2011, I've been creating interactive scenes and experimenting with 3JS. So are you ready to get to create some 3D graphics? Let's go! Today we're going to get comfortable with the basics of 3JS. Um, first thing we're going to do is get Visual Studio Code if you don't already have it. This is the editor we'll be using today. The next thing we're going to do is to download the starter template. Come over here. Uh, the link is in the description of the video. Uh, and make sure you're on the main branch. Download the code. I'm going to download the zip file and put it on my desktop. There it is right there. I'm going to unzip that and I'm just going to create a directory called 3JS Sketches so that um, I have them all in one place. Great. I'm going to drag this into Visual Studio Code. Yes, I trust. Thank you. And now here are my files inside um, running locally. Um, the next thing I want to do is to be sure I have the live server plugin or extension inside of VS Code. This is going to allow us to very quickly see the changes to the code we make. It creates this tight feedback loop where we make a change and we see the change instantly and we can code really fast and it's fun and great. Get this. Um, got it? Great. Fire it up by clicking this little go live, the bottom of your screen. And here we go. Here's my scene. Not much happening at the moment. Let's go over to the code and take a look. Starting with the index.html. Not really covering HTML in this session. Main thing I want to point out is this import map, which makes a, it's a very convenient way to define your uh, JavaScript import paths. I've defined two, three in JSM, and then here I'm importing the JavaScript file. This is where we'll focus today. Here, and uh, first thing I want to do is get rid of this console.log and instead write import star as three from three. Great. Now I want to set up the scene. There's three things that 3JS needs for a scene. A renderer, a camera, and a scene object. Let's create the renderer first. Const renderer equals a new 3.webgl renderer. And we can pass in um, some properties. I'm going to suggest you pass in one property anti-alias is true. Just going to make it look a little bit better. Great. We want to set the size of the renderer. To do that, I want to grab the width and the height of the window. W equals window dot inner width. And const h equals window dot inner height. Now I can set the renderer width and height. See, renderer dot set, whoops, yeah, set size, no, width, height. Great. Also want to um, append to the DOM, the DOM being the HTML page, uh, document dot body dot append child renderer dot DOM element, which is the canvas element. Another way to do this is to create a canvas element inside your HTML and then use that when you set up your renderer. But I prefer to do it this way. Just let the let the three JS handle the DOM element. Great, that's the renderer. Next thing we'll set up is the camera. Const camera new three dot perspective camera. We we need to pass four things into the perspective camera a field of view, 
an aspect, a near, and a far. Okay, let's define those. Const field of view is equal to 75, 75 degrees. If I made this five degrees, the field of view would be very narrow. 90 degrees, it would be very broad. Const aspect, in this case, will be the width divided by the height. Const near is equal to 0 0.1. 0 0.1 units is when it starts rendering. Anything closer to the camera than 0 0.1 units will be invisible. Const far is 10. Great. Now, uh, I want to scooch the camera back a little bit. We haven't added anything to the scene yet, but I want to scooch it back right now. Camera dot position dot z equals two just a little bit further away so i can see what's at the center of the scene last thing we're going to set up uh, const scene equals a new three dot scene great there's our that's the core of this tutorial right now setting that up allows you to render something Renderer dot render. Renderer dot <laughs> render. I got some crazy type in there. And then we'll pass in the scene and the camera. Boom. How, isn't that just beautiful? Let me just close up this console and save it again. It's not beautiful. There's absolutely nothing there. Let's add something really quick. 3JS has built into it some geograph some simple geometries, primitives they're called, and we can just grab one of those and throw it in our scene. Let's do that right now. Const geo equals new three dot icosahedron geometry. It wants to have a size and a detail. Um, we want to put a material on that geometry. Const mat equals new three dot mesh basic material and this wants some properties though only one i'm worried about right now is is the color property let's say 0x cc ff that's kind of a light blue color and const mesh equals new three dot mesh we're going to pass in the geo and we're going to pass in the mat and then we have to scene dot add mesh. Ta-da! What the heck did we just do? Grabbed one of those predefined primitives from 3JS's library, grabbed one of the predefined materials from 3JS's library, the basic material, which doesn't it, it calculate any lights at all, it just has a color. So it's kind of not even an object, it's just a circle, right? Um, and a mesh, which is a, a container for both of the geometry and the material and has a bunch of properties that you can use to move it around or rotate it or animate it. Some would say animate. Let's wrap our render call in a, a function that we can call again and again and again. And then as we update the scene, we'll see some animation. Function animate. And the way that works is through this API request animation frame. Oh, that didn't work. There it is. You pass in the name of the function and you're good to go. Don't forget to call it the first time though. Animate like so. Now it's being called every second. Um, if I were to change the scale of the object, mesh.scale.setscaler and we'll say, um, math dot cosine um, t <laughs> times 0 0.001 plus 1.0. That's really complicated, but let's just add t here. t equals zero to start with. And what the heck is happening? The animate this when I do when I call request animation frame, I'm getting a time 
a, a time difference passed in each time. Um, we could see this more clearly if we were to console dot log t and then pull up the console here. For free, when they call request animation frame, I get this value. I'm just using that to change the scale of my object. But enough of that. Um, and enough of that, too. Let's make our geometry look a little more interesting and then animate it. And then we'll be done for today. To make it more interesting, I want to change the material type. The basic doesn't interact with lights, so if I use the standard, whoops, the standard material, that's going to interact with lights. But uh, there are no lights in the scene. Const hemi light equals new three dot hemisphere light. And I want it to be white on the top and black on the bottom. Scene dot add hemi light. Cool. I mean, sort of cool. I want to change the color of my object to white. And also, flat shading is true. Look what that does. It allows you to see all the facets. And if I reduce the detail, you could see those or increase it. I think two is looking pretty good. Um, to really highlight those different facets, let's add another geometry and see how that looks. It's going to be a wireframe geometry, kind of like this. Const, let's define the material first. Wire mat equals a new three dot mesh basic material again. And the color will be white. Color is zero X. One, two, three, four, five, six. And it's a wireframe material. Good. And we need a wire mesh. Const wire mesh equals new three dot mesh. And we can reuse the geo, the same geo, and we'll use the wire mat. And I don't see it because I need to scene dot add wire mesh. And by default, it just puts it right in the middle of the scene, right on top of the other mesh. There's a problem. If I were to come in here and say mesh, I mean, it's not really a problem, but I want to animate the mesh. Rotation dot y is equal to t times 0 0.00. 0, 1, so uh, a tenth of a second, or sorry, every 10 seconds. Only the gray sphere is moving and the wire is not moving. To solve that, we can mesh.add. So I've just added the wireframe mesh as a child to the, the other mesh instead of a child to the whole scene. And now it'll automatically pick up the transformations you make, like rotations or, or scales or. Uh, position changes. To make it look a little less flickery, I'm going to suggest wire mesh dot scale dot set scalar 1.001. Just slightly bigger, not three O's, well, two O's. See how it's a little less flickery now? That's just, I just scaled it up slightly. Great. I think we're doing well. Let's make it a little bit more visually interesting. Let's make it a kind of a uh, uh, blue color on top. 99FF and a orange color on the bottom. Uh, a kind of a darker orange color. Isn't that nice? It would be nice to be able to kind of um, move around in the scene a little bit. The last thing I want to cover today is to use uh, one of the add-ons to the 3JS library called an 
orbit camera import sorry orbit controls orbit controls and we get that from JSM slash controls slash orbit controls dot JS good we need to const define it const controls equals new orbit controls and we're gonna pass in the camera and the DOM element render or er, render dot DOM element now automatically we kind of get this interaction isn't that cool we can kind of click and drag in the scene and use the scroll wheel or the or what am I using my magic mouse but it gets better you can tweak it a little bit controls dot enable damping enable damping this is true and then set the damping factor um, uh, damping factor and some small number and now you still won't see that until you add this line to your animate method controls dot update so every frame it's going to update the controls like so isn't that nice that's it for now um, tr experiment with this I uh, test your knowledge by tr trying out some different primitive shapes you could use cubes or torus knots which are really cool find the teapot that's inside of of uh, 3JS as well. There's a link in the description to read more about primitives. Try out different lights. Try a directional light, which is like sunlight, or a point light, or spotlights. Also, link in the description. Play with animating things. Animate the position, animate the rotation, the uh, scale. You could change the color of the mesh or the color of the light. When you've done all these uh, this experimentation, or at any time, Go create a JS fiddle and share what you've created with others. Um, love to see, I would love to see what you come up with. Um, that's it for now. Leave a comment below with your thoughts or questions or suggestions. Um, yeah, can't wait to see what you come up with. Thanks so much, and thanks for coming by. Bye.